I'm so glad tomorrow is Christmas because I'm going to have lots of presents. I get to thought I don't expect any presents but a pair of mittens. And so am I. But I shan't have any presents at all. As the three little girls go home from school, they say these things. And as Huang spoke, both the other looked at her with pity and some surprise. For she spoke cheerfully, and they wonder how could be happy when she was poor. She has no present on Christmas. Don't you wish you could find a purse full of money right here in the path? Oh, don't I? If I could keep it honestly, what would you buy? I'd buy a large warm blanket, a load of wood, a shawl for mother, and a pair of shoes for me. And if there was enough left, I'd give Bridge a new hat. Then she needn't wear Ben's old hand down. The girl laughed at that, but Bridget pulled the funny hat over her ear. And said she was touched, but she would rather have candy. Let's look, and maybe we can find a purse. People are always going about with money at Christmas time, and someone may lose it here. So, as they went along the snowy road, they looked about them, half in earnest, half in fun. Suddenly, Huang jumped forward, exclaiming, "I see it! I found it!" The others followed, but all stopped disappointed, for it wasn't a purse; it was only a little bird. It lay upon the snow with its wings spread and feebly fluttering, as if too weak to fly. Its little feet were benumbed with cold. Its eyes was dull with pain, and instead of a song, it could only utter a faint chirp. Now and then, as if crying for help. Nothing but a stupid old robin. How provoking! I shall touch it. I found one once. I took care of it, and the ungrateful thing threw away the minute it was well. Poor little birdie! How pitiful he looks, and how glad he must be to see someone coming to help him. I will take him up gently and carry him home to mother. Don't be frightened, dear. I'm your friend. Ha ha! Don't stop for that thing. It's getting red and cold. Let's go on and look for the purse. You wouldn't leave it to die. I'd rather have the bird than the money, so I shan't look any more. The purse wouldn't be mine, and I should only be tempted to keep it. But this poor thing will thank and love me. I'm so glad I came in time. Gently lifting the bird, Huang felt its tiny cold claw cling to her hand, and saw its. Dim eye brightened as it nested down with a grateful chirp. Now I've got a Christmas present after all. I always wanted a bird, and this one 
will be such a pretty pet for me. He will fly away the first chance he gets, and die anyhow. So, you better not waste your time over him. He can't pay you for taking care of him, and my mother say it isn't worthwhile to help folks that can't help us. My mother says, "Do as you would be done by," and I'm sure I'd like anyone to help me if I was die of cold and hunger. Love your neighbor as yourself. Is another of her sayings. This bird is my little neighbor. I will love him and care for him, as I often wish our rich neighbor would love and care for us. What a funny girl you are, Carrie, for that silly bird, and talking about loving your neighbor in that sober way. Mr. Gates don't care a bit for you, and never will. Though he knows how poor you are, so I don't think your plan amounts to much. I believe it, though, and I shall do my part anyway. Good night. I hope you have a merry Christmas and lots of pretty things. Her eyes were full, and she felt so poor as she ran on alone towards the little old house where she lived. It would have been so pleasant to know that she was going to have some of the pretty things all children love to finding in their full stocking on Christmas morning, and able to give her mother something nice. So many comfort were needed, and there was no hope of getting them. For she could barely get food and fire. Never mind, Birdie. We'll make the best of what we have, and be merry in spite of everything. We shall have a happy Christmas anyway, and I know God won't forget us if everyone else does. She stopped a minute to wipe her eyes and lean her cheek against the bird's soft breast, finding great comfort in the little creature, though it could only love her nothing more. See, mother, what a nice present I've found! I'm glad of it, dear, for I have not been able to give you any presents. Poor bird, you give us some of your warm bread and milk. Why, mother? What a big bowlful! I'm afraid you gave me all the milk. I've had plenty, dear. Dry your wet feet and put the bird in my warm basket. Huang peeked into the closet and saw nothing but dry bread. Mother has given me all the milk, and she's going without her tea because she knows I'm hungry. Now, I will surprise her, and she shall have a good supper too. She's going to split wood. I'll fix it while she's gone. So Huang put down the old teapot, carefully poured out a part of the milk, and from her pocket. Produced a great pumpy bun that one of the school children had given her, and she had saved for her mother. When her mother came in, there was a table drawn up in a warm place, a hot cup of tea ready, and Huang and Birdy waiting for her. Such a poor little supper, and yet such a happy one, for love. Charity and contentment were guests there. In that Christmas Eve, at a great house, where light shone, 
Fire Blazer, Grade 3 Glitter, and Music Sound as the children dance and play. We must go to bed early as we have only wood enough to last over tomorrow. I will get paid the day after and then we can get some. If my bird was only a fairy bird, and would give us three wishes, how nice it would be! Poor dear, he can't give me anything, but it doesn't matter. He can give you one thing, Huang, the pleasure of doing good. That is one of the sweetest things in life, where both the poor as well as the rich can enjoy. As the mother spoke with her tired hand, softly stroking her little daughter's hair, Huang suddenly started and pointed to the window, saying in a frightened whisper, I saw a face, a man's face, looking in. It's gone now, but I truly saw it. Perhaps if some travelers attracted by the light, I'll go and see. Huang mother checked through the door. No one was there. The wind blew cold. The stars shone. The snow lay white on the field and wood. And the Christmas moon was glistening in the sky. What sort of face is it? A pleasant sort of face, I think. But I was so startled I don't quite know what it was like. I wish we had a curtain there. I like to have our light shone out in the evening. For the road is dark and lonely, and the twinkle of a lamp is pleasant to the people's eyes as they go by. We can do so little for our neighbors. I'm glad to cheer the way for them. Now put these poor old shoes to dry and go to bed, dear. I'll come soon. Huang Wen, taking her bird with her to sleep in his basket nearby. Li should, should be lonely in the night. Soon the little house was dark and still and no one saw the Christmas spirit at their work that night. When Huang to open the door next day, she gave a loud cry, clapped her hand and stood still, quite speechless with wonder and delight. There before the door lay a great pile of wood all ready to burn, a big bundle and a basket with lovely nosegay of winter roses holy and evergreen tied to the handle. Oh, mother! Did the fairies do it? Yes, dear. The best and dearest fairy in the world called Charity. She walks around at Christmas time, does beautiful deeds like this and does not stay to be thanked. There they were, the warm, thick blanket, the comfortable shawl, the new shoes, and best of all, a pretty winter hat for Bridget. The basket was full of good things to eat, and on the flower lay a paper saying, For the little girl who loved her neighbor as herself. Mother, I really think my bird is a fairy bird and all these splendid things come from him. It really seems so. The robin flew to the table, hopped to the nosegay, and perching among the roses, began to chirp with all his little mind. The sun steamed in on flower, birds, and happy child. No one ever knew that Mr. Gate had seen and heard the little girl that night before. 
or dream that rich neighbor had learned a lesson from the poor neighbor. And Huang Bird was a fairy bird, for by her love and tenderness to the helpless thing, she brought good gift to herself, happiness to the unknown givers of them, and a faithful little friend who did not fly away but stayed with her till the snow was gone, making summer for her in the winter time. Ho 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 ho! Merry Christmas!